Hello, FX Factory has just introduced their uh, new plug-in background remover and uh, it is uh, operating in a similar manner to a Keeper. So let's take a little look at the two and see which one comes out on top. So uh, as you can see on the uh, Final Cut Pro timeline I have here, I've uh, put in a number of uh, clips to uh, test. And first we'll take a look at this little talking head uh, clip here. And uh, the first thing we'll take a look at is uh, Keeper. So let's go over here and find Keeper amongst the uh, effects and drop it on. And there you go. So you see it operates pretty well instantaneously, which is a good thing but uh, it has some problem areas. You'll notice as I scrub through the clip, there's some uh, artifacts showing under my uh, right arm there. Now we can go up and make some adjustments. They've added some things with uh, version two of Keeper. They've got uh, some adjustments to the uh, pre-processing so we can make some changes on the uh, video itself and contrast is probably our best bet there. So we've made a little adjustment on contrast and that improved the, uh, the cutout under the arm there a little bit. And let's go to thin and that, uh, yeah, that's causing a little, about as much problem as it fixes. So uh, let's take a look at a road and that's kind of helping a little bit. So you can do some things to improve the uh, processing there on uh, Keeper. But as you see, when I scrub through the uh, clip, it still has some uh, problems, particularly down around that right arm area. So let's pop over. This is exactly the same clip. And we'll go to uh, background remover now and see how it does. So we'll bring it over and drop it on the clip. And again, you see it is very instantaneous. But the other thing we'll notice here is without making any adjustments at all, it looks pretty good. We still have a little problem area under that right arm on my shirt. So let's see what we can do with that. So um, on the um, adjustments on background remover, they're not as numerous as they are on Keeper, but I think they might work a little bit better. And it appears to be that the sensitivity is one thing that improves it. As you see, I brought the sensitivity down there and it filled in my shirt very nicely there. So let's just uh, scrub through the clip here again and see what that did for us. So just uh, take a look at it here. And again, it is not perfect, but um, it's very good. And I think most people that are just watching a clip like this uh, will be paying attention to what the uh, person is saying and not really worrying about looking under their arm so much. So uh, from my standpoint, uh, from a talking head video, uh, background remover gets the first uh, point. Now, let's take a look at this next clip, uh, which uh, I chose because it would be a little difficult uh, comparatively speaking, because I've got my dog there. That's little Sebastian. And I'm having a little talk with Sebastian uh, about the fact he took his toy out with him to go pee. So I, I thought it was kind of cute. He needed his toy to go outside and pee. And I'll put a link to that video in the uh, description. So in any case, uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll take a look at uh, Keeper first. So uh, we'll drop that onto the clip. And you can see right away just where I happen to be. It uh, kind of gets Sebastian, but then again, he drops out altogether. So let's center our playhead right there and see what we can do with that. So uh, again, let's uh, look at the pre-process, uh, see if contrast helps that any at all. And it does quite a bit. Uh, it's still, got problems. Uh, you can see uh, the books showing up behind me there. So let's take a look and see if thin will help that any. Nope, thin is not going to help that. Well, let's go the other way and thicken a little bit. And yes, thicken did in fact help. And let's see, a little bit too much there maybe. 
driving. So let's see if the road brings that back down a little bit. So we were able to get on the adjustments there and improve that dramatically. Now let's scrub through the line and, uh, oh, uh, okay. So I fixed one thing and had a major problem on the other. So that's not good. So yeah, so as you can see with uh, an animal in the picture, even though he's being held in my arms, as he moves and I move, it is definitely a problem. And you see even there, it's picked up those earbuds behind me, which I'll be doing a review on here in a day or two. And um, there you go. So let's go to the next clip and see how this exact same clip does with a background remover. So again, drag it over and drop it. And uh, we have much of the same problem with background remover. Uh, let's just step through a frame at it. Okay, there's our worst frame. So let's see what we can do with that on background remover. So again, we'll bring the sensitivity down and see what that does. And that helped a lot, although I had to bring it down pretty much to zero. Um, contour, let's look at it. Uh, yeah. Let's try to bring the sensitivity back up just a touch. See, no, that's not going to do it. So we're going to have to stay low on the sensitivity and the contour. That's about the sweet spot there for this particular frame. But now let's go back and see if it has the same problem that uh, Keeper did in that as we go to different frames, we're going to have different problems. So we'll just scrub through it a little bit. And looking pretty good. So, although it is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, it looks like background remover gets the second point for uh, a person with an animal. Let's, let's just play through that. It's only like a 20 second clip. And of course, as you can see, it's skipping frames because I haven't rendered that yet, but it's close enough. We can see what it's doing. And it's looking pretty daggum good, I think. Now, I had included a third copy of this <coughs> for uh, using uh, MRoto AI. And although I set out to do a comparison with Keeper and uh, a background remover, I do want to take a look at MRoto AI, but I'm not going to bother with this clip here. I've got a, uh, another clip at the very end. You can see at the end of the timeline down there with the blue background. That's where we'll take a look at MRoto. So let's uh, move on to one more thing, and uh, that is a talking head clip here. This is the same talking head clip. I just cut it up a little bit, and I shifted the, uh, the clips a little bit to uh, have a couple of inserts for it there where my, uh, I was rubbing my eye, and I wanted to do that in order to have some fairly abrupt jump cuts. Uh, to see how the uh, background remover handled that. And that is what I plan to use here. I'm not even going to take a look at, uh, at uh, Keeper on this one. But what we have here is a total of five clips. And instead of using background remover and dragging it over to each of those five clips individually, we're going to go up to our titles and we have background remover in the titles as well. So we'll select the title here and drag it down and the problem with that title is it's pretty small so you got to uh, expand it a little bit in it and even then i didn't grab it so we'll expand it a little bit and grab it and drag it on out here a little bit so you see it has cut me out very nicely but the difference is since we're using it as a title it does not uh, show the background layer through behind me. So what we're gonna have to do there is go over here and select fill background from, and we're gonna fill from the drop zone. So I've selected the drop, drop zone there, and uh, we'll go over here and select my uh, bookcase, and we will apply the clip, and there you go. 
So we now have the bookcase behind me again. So uh, instead of my sloppy office, uh, people get to look at a nice organized bookcase with some plants. However, obviously it only covers where the title is at. But that's the nice thing about this. Uh, we can just drag the title right on out. And let's just bring your timeline in here a little bit. We'll just drag the title on out. And as I drag the title out, it covers the entire clip. So you can see we're just scrubbing back through the clip and it handled the uh, abrupt jump cuts very nicely, I think. So uh, it did a great job all the way around. And frankly, I think the uh, keying from background uh, remover is superior to Keeper in every respect. So we'll give it three points now to Keeper's zero. So for the last segment here, I wanted to get a uh, more challenging clip to process. And I wanted something with a lot of movement and uh, things uh, being covered up and uncovered. And the best clip I found for that was uh, these two children walking in the uh, woods through the leaves and each of them has something in their hand. Uh, the girl has a, a little stuffed animal and the boy has a stick in his right hand and they're holding hands. So all of that uh, makes it a little more complicated. And as you can see, uh, as they walk, uh, they're uh, getting in the leaves a little bit. So uh, it, uh, I think, is a very uh, challenging uh, little uh, segment. Now, I have already done the processing on all three of the remaining clips. The first one is going to be with Keeper, and the second one is going to be uh, Background Remover, and finally, we'll have uh, MRoto AI, which is where I uh, wanted to really highlight that piece of software, or the plugin, I guess, is a more accurate way of saying it. But uh, here, uh, we have uh, Keeper turned on, and I'll just turn it off for a second. So you can see there we have the background. And we'll turn Keeper on, and you can see there's a number of problem areas. Uh, in between uh, where the leaves aren't exactly removed. It didn't do a real clean cut out around the little stuffed animal. Between their arms, there's leaves. Uh, between the arm and the body, leaves. And even between her uh, pigtail and her head, the leaves are showing through. And as we uh, continue to scrub, you'll see that it uh, has those problems uh, uh, continuing. Now, another thing I did See this little square down here, it has a patch feature, and I attempted to use that to cover up the problems on her shoe, and it just did not work for me at all. So I'm gonna play with that a little more and see if I can figure out a better way to do it. It's supposed to track, and that's what I attempted to do, but uh, as you can see, it did not come out well at all. So I'm gonna turn patch off there, and uh, you can see that uh, it didn't really make a whole lot of difference. But you do see as she walks there, for example, her left foot uh, kind of, and her right foot as far as that goes, both shoes are pretty well disappearing. So Keeper is not doing a good job. In fact, what did we see there? I saw a little flash of tree above her head or something. So in any case, um, Keeper didn't do a very good job in this one. So uh, background remover is on the next clip. And you can see many of the same problems in background remover with the uh, shoes and not cutting out everything it should and cutting out things it shouldn't. For example, uh, both keeper and uh, background remover failed to pick up the stick in the boy's hand. And uh, for that reason, it's my opinion that both keeper and background remover are best suited to talking head kind of situations and not uh, live action shots so much. However, that brings us back to uh, MRoto AI and MRoto AI has its own problems. Uh, one of which is the fact it's a hated subscription model and I do hate it and I'm torn as to whether or not I will renew my subscription next year. I probably will, but they're sure not getting any uh, goodwill points from me on that. 
But uh, the other problem with uh, MRODO is uh, it's time consuming to uh, mask out your video. But on the other hand, you can mask objects as well as people. So uh, you get a much better job. Uh, you just have to, in complex scenes like this, uh, you can use the magic wand tool to mask most things. But then I had to go to the uh, uh, brush tool and the uh, point eraser tool to clean up uh, a few minor little areas that the magic wand tool did not do so well on. As we can see, MRODO is in fact uh, active. And as we scrub through, you see it did a very good job. We've got the stick in the boy's right hand. We've got the uh, little stuffed animal in the girl's left hand. The shoes by and large are showing pretty well. Occasionally I've picked up a flicker of uh, leaves on the ground. But uh, all in all, MRODO did a very good job here, and had I put more effort into the masking, it would have done an even better job. But, you know, this is only a demonstration. Obviously, I'm not producing a major Hollywood film, so I'm not going to spend three hours trying to mask out a 10-second clip to show just how good MRODO is, and it is good for this. So... Uh, and the other thing I didn't do, let me turn MRODO off for a second. I could have, as we scrub through here, you see they got a little dog up there walking in front of them. So I could have uh, keyed the dog in there as well. I didn't because, as I say, I didn't feel like putting a whole lot of effort into this since it's only a demonstration. But uh, that is the, uh, the advantage and the power of MRODO. On the other hand, it does have one other major disadvantage, and um, that is you have to uh, process the uh, clip after you uh, uh, mask it. And the longer the clip is, the longer it takes to process. And in fact, I did another video, uh, a um, MRODO versus uh, Keeper stress test, and I'll put a link to that down in the uh, description as well. In that video, if you go to the eight minute and 20 second uh, mark, you will, from there to the end of the video, you will see a graphic demonstration of just how annoying MRODO AI is because it takes forever and a day to uh, process a longer clip. But in any case, uh, that is kind of my conclusion from here. Uh, all in all, I'd have to give Keeper a C minus or a D plus. It's just not very good at all. And um, background remover gets a B plus, maybe an A minus. It's pretty good. It's really great on uh, talking head shots. Not so good on action shots, but that's where we come in to MRODO AI. For quality, it gets an A plus. I really like it. it well, an A because there are some little minor details that can do a little better. But an A on quality, but uh, for ease of use and processing time, ease of use, I'd give it a C. Processing time, if you get over about a two minute clip, it's an F because, and go to look at the other video at eight minutes and 20 seconds and watch it out. You'll see what I mean about the processing time on um, MRODO AI. So I hope you got some valuable information out of this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And as Sebastian says, have a good night.